so my name is Artem, and uh, currently I'm working at Skyscanner in London as a principal mobile engineer. And in my own time, uh, I'm working on some you know, side projects uh, using Flutter. So I really like Flutter, and uh, I think that it's a future of uh, mobile development. So that's why I'm investing in this um, uh, language and the framework. And um, recently, I started um, one of the projects, and um, uh, it was a bit hard for me to understand all the exceptions handling that uh, uh, Flutter and Dart can provide you, actually. And I explored a bit, and I wanted to share some uh, result uh, of my exploration. So actually, let's start from the high level. Uh, what is an exception? Um, exception, actually, I, I found two kind of um, definition of this, uh, and I wanted to share it. Uh, so first, it's an inability of an operation to fulfill its contract. So just imagine you have some function, get remaining amount, as I can see on my screen. And um, it uh, actually hit some backend, and the uh, backend returns some amount, some money, and uh, you return the money. It's, it's fine, right? But if backend is not available, for instance, what then? So contract now function is returning money, but you cannot return money in this case. So what function should return then? And yeah, this is the first thing. And this is like a um, philosophical question. So because um, probably you can you know extend your contract and add um, some error in the in the contract. So it could be, for example, easier money or error. So yeah, it's fine. But when you should uh, actually bother about this, when you should make this kind of um, checking this error and um, reacting to this, should it be in this piece of code or higher? Um, upstream. So yeah, all those questions <laughs> arise when you still uh, when you start thinking about the, the exceptions. And the second uh, um, definition is uh, like uh, exception is unexpected behavior. So if, for example, you 100% rely on some function, right, and then you return some value from this function, but um, you know it's not possible. I think in our um, as a, as a software developer, you shouldn't rely 100% on any function, right? Because this function can use some dependency on another function that uh, has dependency on another function that can, uh, in the future, um, something uh, will be changed and it will start, you know, uh, throwing some exceptions. And for you, it's unexpected behavior because uh, you, you you didn't expect it before. And uh, and again, so this is a, like. Um, um, this is the another thing uh, to, to, to think about how 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 can you uh, protect from this, and um, in different languages, uh, people come up with some different actually conceptions of this. It's uh, more like how you want to design your code, and some languages uh, encourage you to use this or that model of uh, handling the exceptions. So, for instance, in Dart, it's uh, like. A, uh, the same conception as uh, you can uh, meet in, in, for example, C++ or Java. So you use uh, try catch uh, um, blocks to actually catch. So that encourage you to see the only happy pass of your function and uh, do not think about uh, exceptions in the first place, right? So it's like you have uh, your uh, main code, happy pass, and uh, then you have another block of code where you can um, you know, take care of exceptions if you want. But if you don't want to do this, you can just uh, silently uh, pass all the exceptions from this block of uh, happy pass to, to upstream. And in upstream, you can handle them. Um, not in all languages, it's, uh, it looks like this. For example, in Go, you have another conception. So uh, if function can return error, then it should uh, return error. <laughs> and, uh, and you should uh, handle this error after you have the result from the function. So yeah, your, your function then will return uh, tuple as a value and error. And you should uh, handle error right after the function and uh, decide what to do with this error. So you can. Um, understand what is the error and uh, react somehow. For example, you can um, 
pass. Uh, you, you can again rethrow some 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 kind of rethrow the error upstream, but this is very obvious from from this code, for example, that I uh, uh, put here. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not the same. Um, how to say business logic in, in each of the code uh, uh, samples. But uh, I think it uh, gives you the understanding of how it looks like in different languages. And uh, Go uh, encourage you to uh, think about the uh, errors in the first place. And uh, uh, it encourage you to think about errors on the same level of importance as your, your hyperpass, actually. And uh, lastly, it's a Rust. It's a third way of uh, handling exceptions. So um, in Rust, if a function can return error, that then it should. And uh, but uh, so it's like almost like in the Go, but uh, it returns you some kind of either. So it's either error, or it's either value or error. And um, Rust provides you with some rather fancy a way of uh, you know make some kind of pattern matching if it is value then it's value if it's error you can make another pattern matching for for error handling um yeah and again so here errors uh, error handling is this um, has i think the same importance as your as your main flow as your happy pass um so it's a different from dart but what's good about dart and flutter is that you can actually implement um both these ways in, in your code. So if you like, for example, how it's uh, been done in in, uh, in Go, you can do like this. You can just uh, return the, the tuples from your function or um, some object with the value and the error inside. Or you can do like a, a Rust uh, does this. So you can return either uh, so result with a value or error. So it depends, it depends on you and your design on how you want to do this actually. And then um, uh, let's uh, uh, dive in into the into the darts and flutter uh, exception handling. So I will switch to the code, um, and we will talk about the uh, different types of uh, exceptions there. So, for instance, in Dart you can catch exceptions in synchronous code, and uh, in the synchronous code, what is uh, that is very good. And actually, um, uh, you can. We, we, we will talk about exceptions in stream listeners uh, and uh, some. I, I will talk about the um, run zone. Actually, it's a, a bit new conception and new from the other languages, maybe except in, uh, JavaScript. And uh, lastly, we will talk how to actually handle unhandled exceptions uh, in your app. So let's um, switch to the code. Um, let's start from the very, very simple um, code that uh, catch actually synchronous, uh, it's synchronous code and how can you catch exceptions synchronous code. I will do it very fastly because it's a rather simple um, thing and, and basic um, um, stuff and in, in, in stuff in, uh, in Dart and Flutter. So you can see that if we have this kind of uh, uh, string that can cause uh, the error, so the Dart, uh, you know, provide you with some, you know, um, clue about what, what what happens there. This is an unhandled, unhandled exceptions, and uh, it said that it's um, exceptions integer division by zero. So it's very simple stuff. So uh, what we can do to protect from this, uh, to to catch this exception, is to wrap it in the try catch, and. Um, if we run it uh, in this case, and you can see that uh, we catch catch the exception here. Um, so that provides you with uh, some um, different options how you can catch exceptions. You can use this uh, catching of specific exception like pattern matching, right? So you can match uh, different exceptions as in line 14 and uh, 16. And uh, um, yeah, and react uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, if exception is not, uh, so if it's uh, some kind of unknown exception for you, so you, you didn't wait it, so you can just uh, use this um, catch um, operator with exception and stack trace, and it's very easy to to investigate later on what, what happens there. So you can see that uh, um, in the third case, we got actually the, um, 
like unknown exception and you can see the stack trace so it's it's easy to investigate um what is interesting here is that uh, you can have finally block as in you know other languages and this finally block will be uh, called uh, anyway after your you know happy pass or after uh, any of your catch blocks and even if you for example return from the catch block uh, even in this case your uh, finally block will be will be called and even if you retrieve actually right even if you retrieve here um, so yeah you can see that uh, this uh, cleanup block uh, was called before the retrowing of the exceptions. Um, so, yeah, retrowing is just a simple um, practice of the uh, redirecting the exception to the upstream, to, so you can uh, handle it, you know, upstream if it uh, make more sense in this case. So this is what this is about the the synchronous exceptions. Then, uh, I mean, uh, exceptions of the uh, that can be thrown from the synchronous code. And what about the synchronous code? It's much more interesting, actually. So let's consider this example. So you have future, uh, delayed, delayed future, and um, it will be actually, it, it will call the, in one second, it will call this kind of block of code, right? So let's see. Um, so we can see that uh, this try catch, uh, you know, actually cannot catch this exception. So we can see this unhandled exception that was handled by uh, Dart itself. So what's wrong with it? Um, what's wrong is this, with this is that um, this try catch block actually uh, try to catch the exceptions in the moment when we, uh, when we try to schedule this uh, callback this is this future in our run loop so but it cannot code exceptions that uh, you know happens in in this block because this block uh, is scheduled in round loop and will be and will be called later on so what we can do here we can wrap for example this exception uh, th this piece of code in try catch or we can do a bit uh, differently we can just uh, put here await instruction and then we force uh, this uh, callback um, be called here in this try catch block so we can actually um, code this exception you can see that yeah so now it's okay um, this uh, callback was called in in this uh, particular uh, context and we can uh, catch this um, exception um, but for example, if we want to have uh, the um, another thing here, for example, we want to have the um, chained uh, future. So we want to have another um, another block of the code that should be run after this, this feature. So what then? How can our try help in this case? Yeah, we can see that yes. So our try cache will uh, actually can can help you to catch all exceptions in all those, um, you know, all, all the chain uh, callbacks. Even uh, yeah, if if uh, if it, it's it's not that clear, but it's 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 possible to to catch it like this. Um, then um, what about um, how, how, is it possible to avoid actually uh, using tray catch in this case? And yes, uh, Dart can. And that allows us to do this. Um, what we can do here is let me copy this piece of code so it's much easier than um, change it. So this is how we can how we can do this in more fancy, you know, dot uh, syntax way, some functional way, I would say. So we can just um, use this, uh, this is the same feature that uh, the same feature that will be called in one second, and then. Uh, another future that uh, cause uh, some exception and we can catch this exception with uh, this kind of syntax catch error um so let's start let's see yeah it's, a, it's, it's the same as a, as a try catch uh, syntax but it's you know maybe in some cases it's more 
easier to understand and uh, follow. And uh, we have the same um, an, uh, some uh, the same kind of uh, block of uh, code that would be called after the catch or the um, uh, happy pass, as in um, our try catch is is a finally block actually. So it names when complete. So where where we can do some cleanup. Um, yeah, and this is it. But if, for example, uh, we make some error here in catch block, for example, this there is a, another true, then uh, of course we we see that these exceptions cannot be catch here because um, yeah, there is nothing that can catch this exception. So what what we can do is. Uh, Made our code a bit more complex uh, again, so we can uh, put another catcher block here to catch exceptions that could be, you know, um, thrown in in the in the previous blocks. But it looks um, not nice, but still, yeah, still we can do uh, we can catch these exceptions. And uh, of course, in this uh, syntax. Um, we do not do any pattern matching of the of the error, but it could be done. Um, code, uh, let me paste it here. Yeah, so you can do something like this. You can, in catch block, you can um, actually um, put some kind of um, testing of exception. If exception is zero uh, division by zero, then you do this, and if it's all other exceptions, you do that. Uh, but you see the code is, I think the code getting, so it, it works fine, yes, but it's getting some kind of messy. So a lot of things here. So that's why uh, mm, Dart actually mm, code style uh, encourage you to use uh, try and um, catch, of, uh, you know, syntax in order to catch exceptions even in futures. Um, and uh, lastly, it's interesting to consider this kind of um, example. What if you have um, the um, what if you have the uh, synchronous code here and asynchronous code? Uh, if you use try catch, it works fine. But if you use uh, this uh, previous syntax that we just consider here, um, it will not work. So in this case, um, you need to, you, you should use actually try catch or you should use some kind of um, uh, synchronous feature. So I, let me, let me provide you some example. Mm. So this is, a, for example, you have this kind of feature, uh, some function, and uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to use this catch catch syntax on this, uh, uh, one second, this is like this. So yeah. So if you want to use catch error for both synchronous and asynchronous exceptions, then you can use um, this kind of wrapping your code, all this code, into the uh, fu uh, future sync. But it doesn't look, uh, I think, very. Uh, simple and easy to understand. So it's better to, um, you know, return back to the syntax that I provided earlier. So this syntax is much more clear and understandable. And lastly, um, so what about the this example? So you you can you usually use timers, right? And uh, in many cases. So and how can you actually? Catch exceptions and timers. So you see, we cannot uh, we cannot catch exception and timer here because timer again uh, schedule this kind of uh, block uh, to the to the our run loop to and uh, this try catch already uh, pass at the at the time when the this block is actually scheduled. What you can do again just to um, protect your timer uh, function is uh, uh, additional try catch block, but yeah, you, you can do better actually. And then we switching to the presentation for a bit. So yeah, this is what we already talked about. This is try catch uh, blocks in synchronous code, pattern matching, 
stack trace for investigation, and finally block that uh, will be invoked anyway, then uh, uh, exceptions in asynchronous code. So again, this is uh, what we already done. So you need to use a wait um, keyword in order to be able to use try catch for asynchronous code. You can use catch error or for the futures, plus a mix of synchronous and asynchronous exceptions. It's better to use try catch again. And then we start uh, uh, this run zone thing. So run zone, it's a, it's a bit different conception. So I just came up with this kind of slide. I don't know if it's clear or not, but uh, zones actually in, in uh, that, it's um, some kind of um, context zones uh, uh, that actually intercept all your callbacks that are being uh, scheduled in this zone and uh, wrap it to their own try catch blocks that uh, uh, helps to uh, catch all the errors that could be, uh, you know, could be thrown in this zone. And uh, it helps you to handle all the unhandled exceptions in your all these asynchronous uh, callbacks and um, react to them accordingly. So let's switch to code in order to see how actually it works. So we can just to consider the same example with timer, right? So as we talked before, you cannot catch exception in the in the timer in, in using the try catch. Uh, but what you can do is to wrap this um, to wrap your timer into the zone. So run zone guarded is a um, default way and the recommended way how you should use uh, zones in, in uh, Dart and Flutter. So you can just um, wrap your code into the into this inst uh, instruction. And this is how you uh, catch the, uh, all the un uh, unhandled exceptions in your code. So this is like on error callback, I would say, right? And you can handle it. You can put it to, to Sentry or to Firebase or I don't to do some cleanup if you need. So let's see how it works. Yeah, you see that no red thing here. We exceptions handled, exception handled. And um, you can see here we um, create our new custom zone here. You can, you can see so each application um, has a root zone. So uh, zone, it's uh, some kind of underlined uh, conception that uh, presents anyway. And uh, if um, you run your application without this runs on guard, then you can, anyway, you can see this uh, uh, root root zone run. So because uh, each any code will be run in some zone. But in this case, you create your own custom zone under the hood, and uh, all the exceptions that uh, happens in this zone will be redirected to, to your, uh, this callback. And this is very cool. Um, it helps you to, it can help you actually to handle uh, a lot of exceptions that could be, you know, squeezed in your code because you can just uh, forget to uh, put some uh, try catch in the, in the timer or if you have very uh, complex uh, asynchronous logic that uh, do some, you know, maybe retries of uh, going to, to the server and um, using timers and do some something, you know, crazy stuff. So yeah, this, uh, can help you to catch all the exceptions and uh, redirect them to where they can can can, can be handled. Um, maybe a bit complex example here. Uh, it is rather. Um, one second, I will find this stuff. Um, yeah, for instance, it's a. Uh, I think it's a rather big one. So I just wanted to explain here that um, uh, you can have uh, zones and inside zones. So um, this kind of nesting uh, can help you to, for example, have uh, one zone for all your app and uh, the additional nested zones that can isolate your uh, code um, for example, code where you do this kind of a uh, business, uh, uh, some kind of asynchronous business logic or uh, another zone for some kind of third party libraries that you cannot trust. And um, 
yeah, you can just uh, split your code into these, these zones and uh, uh, handle exceptions for each zone independently. And here, um, if you run it, uh, you can see that uh, um, um, that different zones. You, you you can have this kind of um, um, zone values when you create zone. Uh, you can assign some zones values to 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 zone. So so each zone it's like uh, it's keeping some context, and uh, you can uh, write some. It, it's just a map. Um, I don't know why I cannot go there. Yeah, ah, here. Yeah, you see, this is just a map of uh, the object and object. So you can use um, you can use this uh, um, map to keep some values there. And uh, if, for example, you use uh, you, you 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 print some exceptions. You can uh, mm, you can put some clues about what kind of zone uh, these exceptions was caught with. Uh, so plus you can maybe do some another. So actually, these zones uh, can help you to um, override some functions, like for example, creation of timers or even print function. So print function can be customized for each zone, and uh, it can help you to you know more um, to 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 use different printing for different zones for for some zones you maybe don't want to print you don't want to print all uh, logs and uh, one of the so we just considered these uh, timers that uh, timer callbacks that uh, zones can help with and another uh, way Another case where zones can help you with it's a streams actually. So if we, if we for example consider this example, so let's start without any zones here. So this is like very simple app where uh, that use streams. So you have some stream that uh, by timer it just uh, emits some kind of uh, integers right in, in the stream, and you have some listener that listen for the um, for the events and uh, let's see how it will work so you see this 43 it's okay but on 44 we have some unhandled exception here so because our listener actually when when this uh, uh, this uh, integer is 44 it's through some exception right so of course it's better to have this kind of try cage block here and catch all exceptions and uh, probably you should have uh, another try cage block here to uh, actually uh, make this code safe but what you can do um but if for example you forget to do this right so of course it's better but you for example uh, pretend that you forget to do this then zone guarded again can help you to catch all the exceptions both in your emitter and in your listener so if you run this example, um, you will see, yeah, that we uh, catch exceptions and your streaming uh, continue um, running. So you can see that we actually catch both exceptions in listener um, that was thrown here. And we caught the exception from the stream um, here. Um, yeah, and stream goes goes further, and uh, you know everything is fine. Um, so let's switch it here again. So yeah, zones can help you actually to yeah to um, uh, isolate some code from uh, like make it some kind of error free and uh, independent from the from another uh, blocks of your code. So one of the examples where you can use it, for instance, if you uh, on on the backend, for example, if you have this kind of uh, HTTP server that uh, serve each client with uh, some um, with uh, with some fun functioning, so you can wrap actually each uh, this kind of instance into their own zone, so they do not uh, um, you know the, the the errors from one. Uh, block of code will not from one instance will not go to, to another so zones can help you with this again and uh, a last uh, almost last thing right um, is about the um, uh, unhandled exceptions in in dart and flutter um, so let's again switch to the code 
and uh, in this um, one second i will switch to the um, to another uh, yeah actually uh, this is a flutter application so and uh, what i've done here i just add this kind of uh, exception in our build uh, function yeah i know <laughs> this is really bad but yeah it could happen anyway right and what then uh, in debug mode you will see if you you, you do this you will see this kind of uh, very fancy red screen with the error um, uh, description what actually happened in your flutter framework when it tried to uh, render your uh, view your screen and you can see this is error right Mm -hmm. But you actually, um, by default, you can you 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 cannot do anything with this error, right? You cannot log it. You you do nothing with this. So, but it's better, of course, to intercept these exceptions and uh, at least uh, you know log it somewhere in your Firebase or um, Firebase or, or Sentry or whatever you want. So, in order to do this. Uh, you need to just add uh, this kind of uh, lines of code. So you need to first you need to initialize your your widget binding in order to use uh, the next function. And this Flutter error on error callback helps you to um, intercept all the errors that happens in your uh, in your Flutter framework. Uh, so if you save this stuff, and you can see that we Mm. Let's restart it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one error exception. So we intercepted this exception and we can log it somewhere in your um in your in the system you prefer where you want to log it. So then another another bad things that can happen with you if everything is work fine yeah but again this timer right <laughs> in this timer you again uh, throw exception and uh, then what you can have this kind of verbose logs that helps you to understand that something uh, was happened in in one of the uh, asynchronous callbacks um uh, but you again you cannot log this this error um you don't have ability to, to, to log this error. It's first thing. And um, I was talking about two ways of doing this. Maybe I just uh, briefly um, return back to, to this um, to this code. So first of all, you can catch your errors uh, in Flutter framework. Um, so in the functions like uh, build, like, uh, you know, uh, this kind of functions uh, that produce this kind of red screen uh, on, on, your, on your simulator. Mm, you can use this kind of um, flutter on error callback and um, catch errors and log them to, 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 to the you know to the center of Firebase or whatever. And the second uh, way of uh, handling the unhandled exceptions in Flutter is um, uh, using again our runs on guarded. So in this case, you wrap your run up uh, into these uh, runs on guarded. Um, um, uh, function and they catch all the exceptions, all the asynchronous exceptions that comes from your code. So in this case, you can uh, actually catch these kind of exceptions and uh, again log them. Uh, why it's important? It's because uh, this kind of exceptions very hard to um, to see in your logs. Uh, it's a first thing, and um, so because. Uh, if you run, for example, your if you debug on your simulator, then it's okay. You can see the, the, these kind of exceptions in your uh, logs here, uh, in your IDE. But if you debug on the device, then uh, those unhandled exceptions uh, will not be shown on your uh, on your logs. So you will not see anything. So you will see just uh, uh, timer one runs and that's it. So and it's very hard to debug actually. Um, um, this kind of situations. So that's why it's better to wrap your code with uh, with uh, this kind of run zone, run zone function and, uh, uh, you know, explicitly print the exceptions in your log and uh, uh, maybe send it to some of the uh, logging systems. So 
I think this is uh, what I was uh, uh, talking about probably before my microphone was off. Sorry for this again. And uh, so here I just put it in another way. So this is your Flutter app and the uh, Flutter framework errors comes to this Flutter error on error callback and uh, all other code, uh, your code can handle, uh, you know, all asynchronous exceptions using runs on garbage. So, and I'm I think run out of time. And the uh, last uh, slide is about them um, actually uh, conceptually how you can use those all of those techniques. So it's only my uh, view on this. So you can follow, cannot follow, the, or may not follow this kind of um, mm, conception conceptions uh, and and uh, design. But usually. Uh, your low-level libraries uh, provide you with the ability to uh, catch the exceptions, say specific exceptions using try-catch um, blocks. And uh, actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, specific exceptions in this uh, low-level library. So in your service layer, probably you want to actually aggregate those specific exceptions and uh, convert them to the, some kind of business exceptions that your business logic can understand better. Uh, for instance, uh, you can have um, Mm, in, in on a business logic that uh, change view state in UUI, you maybe don't care about what exactly happens on your server, why it is unavailable, but you want to uh, know that server is unavailable and that's it. And you want to, uh, uh, you know, warn users that something goes wrong. And uh, probably you can just uh, mm, split your exceptions to two kind of uh, types. One is uh, um, uh, something that cannot be revertible or, um, you know, you, you cannot actually somehow overcome this exception and you can say users that, you know, oops, something wrong has happened. And the sec uh, second type of exceptions can be uh, that uh, you can, user can uh, retry and uh, uh, have result uh, finally. So, and um, this business exception, probably it is only two of them that, that uh, can uh, make sense for you. Uh, so, in service layer, you use you can use, for example, try catch, and then later on between service and business logic, you can use multiple ways of uh, of doing this, or uh, using uh, a feature catcher, or uh, or just tuples, or either or whatever you want. And before between business logic and UI, I think you don't want to use any exceptions. You just update the state, so it should be easy. And um, the complex feature could be uh, wrapped with the runs on guarded, as we talked about. And uh, it will help you to catch all the exceptions that you uh, missed uh, some in some place of your code. And um, probably that's it. Uh, so uh, thank you very much.